Hey guys, what's going on? I know we're getting ready to go live here, so go ahead and chime in. Might take a few minutes uh, to let people get in. We're going old school style. So when you get a chance to hop online, go ahead and just pop on in there. And we'll get we'll get rolling here in a second. Hopefully you guys are doing all right. Hello, hello. We're gonna be going here in a second. Let's see, let's see. I'm gonna try to get this to uh, do some things for me, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to. But uh, we're gonna try anyway. Hey, what's going on everybody? We're gonna get started in a minute or two. Go ahead and pop in, say hello. And we'll get rolling. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. How's it going? Man, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? That's why I'm outside. This is my house, by the way, in case you haven't told. That's our kitchen window. Jess might pop in and scare you here in a little bit. But hey, we're glad you're here. I'm trying to do something weird here, so let's see if I can do it. I don't know if I can. Maybe not. We're going to get started in about uh, probably a minute or two, and then uh, we're going to get moving. So if you're popping on, go ahead and say hello, and let us know that you're watching. Let us know that you're here. If you want to participate in the comment section, uh, you're welcome to do that. Um, you can get as detailed as you want to. My, uh, let's see, my eyes are terrible. And so it may be hard to try to squeeze in there to see what, uh, what questions you have or things like that. But uh, as we get started, let me just kind of tell you what the, the purpose of this midweek thing is going to be. Uh, primarily, it's, it's for you to bring your questions. It's for you to give us some things to talk about, um, whether it be experiences that you may have had, maybe their questions that people that you work with, maybe people in your family, uh, maybe they're even your own questions about the Bible, about scripture, about your relationship with God. And what I wanna do is we're gonna just kinda start simple. And so tonight, I, I know I've been saying in church that we're only gonna try to do about 10, 15 minutes. Um, but if you know, uh, 10 to 15 minutes to me just means wherever the night takes us. And so the good thing about watching this live and at home is you can leave whenever you feel like it. If you're like, man, I've had enough Bible, uh, Brandon's getting monotonous and uh, I'm tired of listening to him, just say goodbye um, and hopefully we'll see you next week and I didn't scare you off too much. But what I wanna talk about tonight is this idea of defining the relationship. Now, I just celebrated my birthday yesterday, so thank you all for celebrating that. If you didn't write me or anything, shame on you. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but what's more important is on Monday, Jess and I are going to celebrate our seventh year of marriage together. And I don't know about you, but there's always that moment in your relationship with people where you have to define that, right? It's like that. It's, it's awkward sometimes, especially if you're, you've been friends for a while and you don't really know where the relationship's going. You may have a, an idea in your mind, um, but if you're like me, sometimes that idea is way far off uh, than the reality. And so you, you have to end up having that conversation sometimes, right? And so you get to a point where you sit down together and you start to kind of feel the air, you know, because it's got to be just right. And uh, you sit there and usually it's the girl who is trying to define everything. But for Jess and I, it was so different. Uh, see, we started dating back in like, oh man, I, I can't remember anything after about six days. So we, we dated around Thanksgiving. I think it was between Halloween and Thanksgiving, sometime in that, that time frame. And in the process between the moment we had to define where we were to the time where we just started hanging out a little more and getting to know one another, she got accepted to an internship at Disneyland over in California. And I booked a vacation to go see my buddy in, in Pennsylvania. And the difference is, is I was only going to be gone for a week and she was going to be gone for eight months. And so we, we had to sit down and she explained to me that this is something she really wanted to do in her life. This would help boost her into, at the time, what she thought was going to be her career goals. And we had to discuss where do we go from here? 
You know, long distance relationships, if you've ever been in one, they can be kind of tricky sometimes. And so we had to sit down and try to, to figure out where are we going here? What do we want to do with our life? What do we want to do? How do we, how do we define the right now? And, and we, it was a detailed conversation. We didn't hold anything back. I, I shared with her some of my concerns. Um, I told her there probably isn't anyone as good looking in California as, as I am. And so she has to take that risk by not seeing this face every day physically. Um, and so she shared some of the scares that she had with, with maybe not pursuing a relationship or, or we, we just had to define it. Where are we? Where do we want to go? And what do we want our life to be? And I remember telling her, I said, listen, I, I want to see where this thing goes. You know, I'm willing to put in the effort to commit to you, to try to contact you as often as we can. You know, we ended up talking at least every other day, whether it be by phone, Skype, all the cool things that we have going on. Technology is a wonderful thing if you use it right. But we ended up getting to the point where we decided, let's go ahead and pursue this relationship. Let's try to take this and see where it goes. And I told her, I said, if we can make it through this, I guarantee you, you're going to be my wife. Because in my mind, I'm thinking about communication, right? Her and I being able to talk to one another, being able to, to share, I guess, feelings. I know that seems weird, especially if you're a guy listening to this. But we're able to talk face to face, whether it be through a screen, on a phone, and it broke the physical relationship completely in half, which was okay for her and I. Um, just being able to see her through a screen and talk to her that way was enough for me. And, uh, and thankfully, it was enough for her. And so she had ended up doing the eight months. I visited her one time, I think, in the month of May while she was gone. And we established our relationship based on communication, uh, which has been great. Uh, because I think that helps set us into our marriage with a really strong communication. Um, although sometimes we fail at that. But, but that's where we are. And so when we defined our relationship, it got to a point where we decided we wanted to pursue this. It goes a little deeper. And so what I want to talk about tonight comes from Matthew 16 as we dive into to the scriptures. And let me set the context a little bit for you. What's happening is Jesus just came back from this big trip and, and he's, he's with his disciples and he comes to this little town of, of Caesarea and they start to sit down together. And Jesus is just kind of interrupts the conversation, breaks up the, the harmonious vibe that's going on, if you will. And he says, who do you guys say the son of man is? Who do people say a son of man is? And so they start to give their answers. You know, they say, well, some say you're Elijah. Some say you're Moses. Some say you're Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. And Jesus says, okay, now let me take it a step further. And what Jesus is doing here is he says, let's define this relationship. And so in Matthew 16, uh, that area, uh, Matthew 16, 16, is where Peter replies to that question. And Jesus says, okay, so who do you guys say the Son of Man is? And, and Peter pipes up and he says, uh, you are the Son of the living God. You are the Messiah. And Jesus says, man could not have given you that. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for man did not reveal that, but God himself revealed that answer to you. And the, the, the relationship between mankind and the Son of God was defined at that very moment, which is why when, when you and I accept Jesus into our life, when we get baptized and we accept him as our Lord and Savior, that, that relationship has been defined. The problem is, is we live in a culture where defining the relationship is temporary. I mean, think about it. When you go get a brand new car, that's a quick seven-year note sometimes even faster than that. And so when you're done paying that off, now you have a little bit of freedom and you have this bill until that's paid off and you've got that loan and you've got student loans and all these temporary engagements that you and I face on a daily basis. And when it's done, it feels like the relationship's broken. It's over. It's, it's, it's a freedom. And we've taken that into our marriage to where it's like, well, when the next new thing comes or when something better comes along, I can break this commitment. And I'm seeing more and more in our world today that we do that with Jesus too. And over the month of June, I, I try to, I've been trying to read a, a new book every month um, to try to get 12 books read in a year. And I read one in June called The Christian Atheist. And uh, it was a great book, and it really kind of opened my eyes into the current situation. And what this book discusses is how people believe in God, but dot, dot, dot. And one of the chapters in there, it says that uh, a Christian atheist is someone who believes in God, but doesn't know him doesn't know him. They've never had that moment where they could sit down and define the relationship. And so what I'm asking you to do tonight is to get real with yourself and ask yourself this question. If I were with Jesus right now and he asked me, 
who will I say that he is? What would my answer be? Because how you answer that question changes everything. And what he talks about in this, in this chapter specifically is how we know people on a different level, right? And so if you know me by Brandon, chances are you probably don't know me that well. Uh, yeah, you know my name. You may know, know that I grew up in a small town. You may even know my siblings, my parents, uh, but you don't really know me. Now, in high school, if you called me Bebop or Brando or some other sort of nickname, uh, there's a good chance that you probably had some sort of friendship or relationship with me that went a little deeper than just a simple hello. Um, but now I'm in a different point in my life where I know somebody knows me on a more intimate basis. My wife, for instance, she knows more about me than anybody else in the world. Uh, even my parents, you know, it's like there's that new relationship that's built. And now I have children who call me daddy and, uh, and they know me on a whole different level. So it, it, d depending on what you call me is how our relationship is. Right. And so that's kind of the context of the, uh, of the chapter of, of that part of the book. But what I want you to do is I want you to simply ask yourself, how well do I know God? Do I know him as just God? Do I call him God? Do I know him as Lord? Do I know him as a friend? Do I know him as father? Because how you define that answer is going to shape where you're sitting in your spiritual walk. And so, friends, I hope that you've had a great week. Um, I know that these little midweekers or these little midweek sessions are going to be just more of an encouragement for you. If you have a question, if you have any comments, if you have a study that you're interested in learning a little bit about, don't hesitate to let us know. Uh, you could private message me those things. That way, uh, you don't have to put that on the on the thing in case it's more of a private situation. Or you could just write a note with no name attached to it and leave it at the church in an envelope for me, and uh, I'll be sure to pick that up. And uh, I know that there's real hurt out there. There's real struggle in trying to figure out where you're at and where you're walking with the Lord. Um, but I want you to know that we're in this together and that we're going to do this together. And uh, we're here, you know. And so wherever you find yourself defining your relationship with God, just know that he loves you dearly. He's grateful for you. He's rooting for you. In fact, he loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you. And uh, that's probably the most important thing we could walk away from. So I hope you guys have a blessed week. I thank you for joining in and just having a fun time with us tonight. Uh, I know it's kind of low-key, low energy, um, but it's beautiful outside, so I figured I'd come out here. We'd listen to the birds chirp a little bit. Um, but just be encouraged. Um, I know we're living in some rough times, and there's headaches all around. But just know uh, that I care about you, but more importantly, that the Lord sees you where you are. And he loves you, and uh, there's nothing that's surprising him right now. Um, so wherever you are, whatever your walk is, God sees you, and he loves you. And uh, I just want you to take the time this week to define your relationship with God and let that change everything. All right, let me pray for us, and then we'll, we'll head out tonight. God, we're grateful for this opportunity. Uh, I thank you for all those who have joined with us tonight and maybe those who will watch later, uh, that they can be blessed where they are. Um, that they may take this chapter of the Bible, Matthew 16, and that they just dive into it and see how the disciples finally figured out who it is that Jesus is and what he's come to do and the walk that they had in their relationship with him that further surpasses. And so, Lord, I just pray that we identify you for who you are in our heart, that we know no matter our circumstances or where we are in life that you, that you are crazy about us. And if nothing else, Lord, let that love for us be enough to keep us motivated to continue pressing on. And so, Lord, we thank you for, for tonight. We thank you for the beautiful weather we've had lately. And um, we just thank you for friendship and fellowship, Lord. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, be blessed. We'll see you next week.